Hi everyone. While working in the last episode of the Ghost of the Prairies documentary series, I was incredibly lucky to interview Linwood Tobol, a tribal historian for the Northern Cheyenne tribe, on the profound relationship between the buffalo and the plains natives. During this interview, he told me this story about his family's relationship with the last bison to have lived on the reservation. It was amazing enough that I wanted to share the story with you all. It's just uh, an honor to, uh, to, to be close to Buffalo. Right across from where I live, my grandmother said that the last Buffalo on a reservation was killed right across from her house. And it was just a, it started out as just a simple day when me and my grandmother were sitting in the shade on a hot summer day. And I had a stick and I had, I was drawing, I drew a buffalo skull on the, in the dirt. My grandmother immediately got up and she says, I just thought of something. She says, come on. She says, I'm going to show you something. So she went to her shed and she got a wagon and a shovel and filled her wagon with gunny sacks. And she said, when I was a little girl, she says, uh, my mother, and my brother Hill and my sister Dora, we saw this buffalo come down from the hills. And he said it stopped across the creek there and it would stand there for a while and then it would go down and drink water and then it would come back and it would lay in the dust and roll in the dust. And in the evening it would go back into the brush. She said it had done, done this for several days. She says it would come down and drink and then it would roll in the dust and lay in the sun for the better part of the afternoon and she said we were so happy to see it. It was such a big old bull. It would shake and all the dirt would fly up and then in the evenings it'd walk into the brush. One day it didn't show up. The next day it still didn't show up so my grandmother's mother, they told the the grandson to go and look for it. So he rode across on a horse and he came back and he says, it's laying in a brush in that plum bush. It can't get up. And the buffalo was circling, was going in a circle and it couldn't stand up. But this was a scary time of, for the Indian people. This is a time of uh, malnutrition. This is a time when our people were real hungry. A lot of our people were sent to prison because they had been poaching cattle and different things. But there were so many cattle ranchers around the reservation. So many people got sent and they were always looking for poachers. So they were scared to butcher this buffalo. So they waited until long into the night and they took their wagon and went across there and they, they killed this buffalo and they butchered it. And she said, this is why we're going there. She said, we buried the head and the hide. We buried it so nobody could find it. She said, we took the other parts home. She said, this is what we're going to dig up. And when we were, we were sitting in the shade resting and she said, we couldn't trust anybody. But she said, my brother would stand on that tall hill up there and he would look for people that are coming in a wagon or somebody coming on foot or on horseback. And if somebody was coming, they would, he would run, ride the horse down and tell them and they would, they would hide all the meat that they were drying in the trees. They would hide it, cover it up. They, uh, they were so scared that they would go to prison. So they, they wouldn't even eat it during the day because the, uh, the Cheyenne police were so vicious in nature. They were real strict and they could smell it. If you ate any kind of meat, they could smell it on your breath. So they would eat around midnight at night and they would hide their food. Eventually, they, uh, they had everything dried and hidden away real good. But in the meantime, they had buried that head there was a washout there, and uh, she said, dig right here. So she gave me a shovel. And they had put the buffalo head and the hide there, and they had caved in the bank on it. 
So I start digging it, and when I felt hit something, I start digging it out. And it turned out to be a great big buffalo skull, the biggest I had ever seen. She said, we're gonna take it home. But she says, keep quiet, don't tell anybody. She was still scared of going to prison, going to jail, because she thought they would find some law against it. She would look around and she'd say, do you hear any wagons coming? So we started going and was going too fast pulling that little wagon and this skull was rested on gunny sacks. And because of the bouncing, the skull fell apart, came apart. So we, uh, we took it on home and we put it together as best we could and we put clay neck inside of it too, so it would stick together. And we put it next to her teepee poles and it was the biggest buffalo skull I had ever seen. This was a tough time for the Cheyenne people because of malnutrition. This was the time of the many diseases that hit our people. The buffalo, with all of their, their medicines, all the parts of them, they could ward off sickness. They made the Cheyenne strong. So after all the buffalo were killed, the Indian people started to experience sickness and starvation. And, uh, they, they couldn't ward off the, the diseases like they could when buffalo was plenty.